Hello everyone, today I want to talk about Mermaid.js. This is a diagramming and charting tool which uses JavaScript and allows you to create some really cool charts for your markdown files. Of course, if you use like GitHub, you'll know you have these MD files and these actually support Mermaid Markdown. You can see here in my readme, I have a quick little chart here that shows us a relationship between our Rails apps posts and the device users. We can see that a device user has many posts and we can see that a post belongs to a device user. You can navigate around this using these arrows, refresh it to center it, a whole bunch of other options, including expanding it and copying it. For this, we're going to be using a tool eventually. This tool will allow you to generate this ERD automatically in your Rails app. So over here, I have what this looks like in localhost, where I have this post and this device user. I just clicked, or I just typed in generate the stuff, and the gem generated this, this diagram for me. I can then click on this if I want to, like copy the markdown code, come over to this repo right here, which is what we're gonna use, and I come in here, I edit this readme, and I can just say, all right, I want to, uh, let's make sure I'm zoomed in enough. I want to do the mermaid. So I'll just do the triple back ticks, come in here and paste this. And you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Uh, it actually already had the mermaid stuff attached, so I can get rid of that. And I can just paste this in. So it gives us an ERD diagram with some comments here. Uh, and then it creates a table for the posts and a table for the users. So if we come over to the preview here, you can see this is already working as you would expect it to. Now in the mermaid docs, there's more diagrams than just a quick little ERD or class diagram. You can do flow charts, you can do sequence diagrams, Gantt charts, etc. And some of the stuff is really cool. Like personally, big fan of the Git graph. I think this is a really cool uh, piece of piece of tech right here, being able to create these neat looking flow diagrams. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you might find useful. For me personally, I like this because it allows us to create documentation that sort of lives alongside the code. So like if we were to come in here, you can come into your app, your models, and then in your models, you can create a, another readme. And then this readme right here, let's say readme, readme.md. Uh, this one might just describe what the models relationship is with each other. So you don't have to create this in your overall readme, but you come into like a specific directory where you have these classes. You can already see the documentation here in the repository with everything else. For me, this is the kind of documentation I prefer. Of course, everyone's different, uh, but this is something that I really like. But OK, let's go ahead and let's create this demo app real quick. So to do this, all I have here is a blank Rails app, uh, which has nothing to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do a git pull real quick. Uh, because I just want to pull in that readme we just created so that we can have that as a point of reference. We have this app models readme here. Uh, but okay, we need to actually create this, this setup. So let's do a bundle add device. Then we'll do a, uh, let me hit F11. We'll do a rails g device colon install command. We can then do a rails g device user command. We can then do a Rails G scaffold for a post with a title and a body of type text. And then we'll give it a user colon references, just like that. And now we can go ahead and do a Rails DB colon migrate command. Uh, we do want to come into our app models and our user.rb because we want to say that this has many posts. Uh, but of course, because we set up that references, we can also come into our post.rb and we can see this already belongs to a user. So that's already taken care of for us. Final thing is just to make sure this actually works like a regular app. You can come in here, do a before action to authenticate the user, except for the index and the show, uh, which means when you get to, to the create, you're already authenticated. So then we can do post.params.merge for the current user uh, ID, or the user ID set to the current user.id. So that should work there. And then down here in our controller, we no longer need to permit the user ID. And that'll work just fine. So we just have something pretty bare bones here, but this will work. Uh, now let's go ahead and maybe we can come into our routes real quick and we'll just set the root to be the post controller index action. Okay, so uh, pretty much none of that was necessary aside from the generation commands and adding the has many posts, but we have a, a demo app here. Now to actually use this uh, mermaid uh, JS rails gem, the only thing we really have to do is come into our gem file. And in our gem file, we can scroll down or we can come into the development group. I think they list it in the development group. 
you can just say gem rails dash mermaid underscore ERD, just like that. And then you can do a bundle command again, and this should go ahead and install this gem for us. Now with this gem, what we can do is we can run a bundle exec rails mermaid underscore ERD. So go ahead and it should do two foreign keys just like that. And now the question becomes, where does it create this? Well, it creates this in the mermaid ERD directory right here at the top level. And then you have this index.html, which has a whole bunch of stuff in it. Uh, but this is what's going to look like the demo I showed you earlier. Now, personally, I would rather move this somewhere else. So what I will do is show you how to move this location. You can actually come into your config, right click new file, uh, and you want to create a, uh, it is a mermaid underscore ERD dot YAML. And then in here, what you want to do is uh, a quick little check. You just want the result path. Uh, and then I think they have the default path set here, which is uh, actually set to docs, I think, right? Something like this, or no, it is just mermaid ERD uh, slash index.html. Okay, so that's the default. We'll set the result path to be doc, or let's do public slash uh, ERD slash index.html. So this is gonna be our path here. We can then go ahead and run this command again. Oops, let's do this command again. Bundle exec rails mermaid ERD. Now we can come into our public directory and we'll have the dot or the ERD file and the index.html. Now we can do a rails s. We'll come over to localhost port 3000 here. We can see our new post that'll cause us to have to log in, but we can also go to slash ERD slash index.html. And this will take us to this page again where we have this stuff. We can now go ahead and you know explore this, click on the code if we want to, or we can just copy the markdown code. So what I'm gonna do here, you can also show like column components and the keys. So you can see that the ID for the user is the primary key and the user ID is the foreign key right here. Uh, we'll then copy the markdown code. We can come over here and come into our readme real quick. We'll do our overall readme, I guess. We can go ahead and paste this in. Uh, and then I'll, oops, I'll uh, hit control B here to hide the side panel. There we go. So we can paste this in. Now we can see we have a regular readme here where we can say this is my Rails app or something. I don't know. Uh, and then we have the, the thing here. Now you'll see there's a couple errors in here, but that's fine. And if you actually click on the preview, assuming you have the markdown uh, preview, this actually doesn't work. So you do need to install a specific uh, extension for mermaid js uh, let me see if i can move this over so you can read this so you can see like mermaid markdown preview support seems like a pretty popular tool so we'll click install on this we can then come over to our readme's again and click on the preview and now you can see we actually have this preview working here so this this works great it looks just like in the github repo but uh, of course it's always nice to have something like this where we can filter we can say like i want to look at the users or i want to uh, let's say I select none, I search for user, uh, and I select the user, right? Or I deselect the user, so you can't see that either. And we search for post, we select the post. And then let's say you have like three or four models you want to select so you can see how they interact. This is just a quick way to do that. But okay, let's go ahead and let's do a git add dot, git commit dash m. We'll say uh, add mermaid doc, and we can do a git push. Type yes, push that up, and we can come over to our overall app here. Uh, and in our mermaid.js repository, we can now scroll down here and you can see we've pushed this up. Now, of course, if you want to, you can also add more to these, uh, these readme things if you want to. Now, unfortunately, if you want to add a second diagram here, what you might have to do is create a second block. So we'll come in here, we'll grab another one of these. Uh, let's grab this class diagram, I guess. Go ahead and copy this, move it over. Uh, we can come into this, uh, this section here, we'll grab the mermaid block, we'll say mermaid, paste this in, and then go ahead and close this. Now we can see the second class diagram here. I think if we were to cut this and paste it in here, we'd get an error, uh, something or other about like un unending or no end of line. You could do like a uh, subgraph, I think, or for like a sequence or something uh, like this maybe. And if we get rid of this, this should work. So it gives you a subgraph and a sequence. Uh, but that only gives you like this extra box. There's no real way to do this, I think. 
Uh, so for here, you'd want to just create the second diagram uh, and just have this live alongside it. Now, as for what this will look like, once you actually push this up, we can do a git add dot, git commit dash M, add a sub graph or something. We'll do a git push and come over to our uh, GitHub repo here. We can refresh and we should hopefully see this get put down here. So now you have like two sets of these controls, which isn't ideal, but of course, mixing graphs like that wasn't really making much sense anyways. Uh, so I think this still works. But yeah, it's kind of just what I wanted to cover for this. I do think it's really nice having these readmes because now if you, for example, come into your app, your models uh, and your, your models directory, you see this readme here. Uh, and if you have like your preview open, you can automatically see this diagram, right? Uh, similarly, you come into your GitHub repo, you come up to like app, you come up to the models directory and you're already greeted by that, that diagram. So in that case, I think it's really nice to have this like living documentation alongside what you're working on. Uh, and by using the Rails Mermaid gem, it makes it infinitely easier because having this thing pop up uh, really just makes your life a lot easier. But yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about today. So hopefully this was informative and helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next video.